and welcome to Girl Talks Fish. I'm your host, Irene, and today I'm going to teach you seven healthy meals you can feed your fish throughout the week so they'll grow happy and healthy. So rather than go through a bulleted list of my favorite fish foods like I always do, I figured I'd just do a vlog style video and just show you every day what I give my fish. I think some people have the problem where they feed the same old stale, possibly expired fish flakes every single day for three years in a row versus other people might be like me where I kind of have fish food collectoritis and I hoard a lot of different varieties. And so every single day feeding my fish becomes analysis paralysis. I don't know what to give them. So you're gonna need to do a little research on this for your particular fish, but basically figure out, you know, what types of food will they eat? Is it gonna be dry food, frozen, live? What nutrients they need? More heavy on the protein versus vegetable, versus some like plecos like to scrape on wood. And then finally, what is the form factor they prefer? Will they eat really big foods or they didn't have tiny foods to fit in their tiny mouths? Do they want it to be floating or sinking? And then of course, taste, which you won't really figure out until you buy it and try it. Good morning, happy Monday. So today I am going to feed my fish frozen bloodworms. So the previous night I actually took out a cube and then put it in a little plastic tub like this and put it in the refrigerator so it could defrost overnight. And then now I'm just going to feed everything to the three tanks that I have right now. So first up we have my back to basics planted tank. And we've got a lot of algae eaters, but also dwarf chain loaches. And like many loaches, they love their meat. So I'm going to try to give everyone a fair chance at eating. So I usually have to spread it out in multiple piles in the tank. So you can see the frozen bloodworms sink pretty quickly, which is great for the loaches. They do swim sometimes midwater, but they're mostly on the bottom. The auto sinkless probably won't be as interested in this food, but it's okay. We're gonna take care of them in the subsequent days. Next up, we're gonna feed the juvenile balloon mollies. And you can see the tank light is off because I kind of like to stagger my tanks a little bit. Like the main tank is on kind of during the daytime. And then this one is more from uh, late afternoon to evening so that my husband, the night owl can enjoy them. As for how much I feed each tank, um, I honestly look at the roundness of their bellies, which can be a little hard to tell with balloon molly sometimes, as well as how much poop is coming out of them. So a lot of times, with, especially with live bears and plecos, you can see long stringy poop coming out of them. And that sometimes means that you're feeding them too much and they might get constipated or have other issues. So just gotta watch that. I forgot before I can feed these fish, my super secret brand new fish, if you're not a Patreon supporter, these are dwarf red coral platies, which took me a long time to find. And after my last time with the Endler's live bears, having trouble with them having live bears disease, I'm a little paranoid. I've actually already had one death, which was pretty much immediately right after I bought them. And like nothing on the fish looked wrong. It looked completely normal. So now I'm super paranoid, but I'm gonna go ahead and just in case they have it, they already went through the quarantine med trio, and now I'm going to dose them with Levam. All right, now that the medication is added, water is changed, I'm going to go ahead and feed them some bloodworms. And yeah, Greg Sage re actually recommends feeding the fish through their levamisole treatment. The thought being that if they do have internal parasites, they need to kind of push through their system. Adding new food to the digestive system will help them create more waste and um, hopefully hurry up that process of getting rid of unwanted pathogens. Happy Tuesday! This will probably be the only day of the week you see me in full makeup because I just finished recording a video, but today is Rapashi Day! Yeah! So I've got Community Plus, Grub Pie, and then Soylent Green. And because I have so many algae eaters, we're gonna give them some Soylent Green today. Let's go! So first I'm gonna microwave a little bit of water for about, I don't know, minute 30. All right, today I'm going to make about a teaspoon of rapashi. This smells lovely, by the way, if you've never made rapashi before. I just kind of hold my nose and distance myself a little bit. 
So one teaspoon of food for every two to three teaspoons of water. Put that hot water in there, mix, mix, mix. Make sure all the lumps are out. And then that's it. I'm gonna let it cool down and settle on the counter. Mmm, green. All right, it's only been, I don't know, less than five minutes and I think it's already solidified. Yum, yum, yum. I think when I first fed to Rapashi, most fish don't know what to do with the stuff, but they quickly get the hang of it and it becomes one of their favorites. This is definitely something my already fat and happy Otto Sinkless are gonna be interested in. So you can see him starting to linger around. It fell somewhere behind that rock, but I'm not worried. They're gonna find it immediately. Unfortunately, as I suspected, something is going on with this aquarium, this quarantine tank. And so that fish right there is not doing well. She's not hanging out with everybody else. She's hiding in the plants and whatnot. Sorry about the glare. And so I'm glad I already started treatment on Levamisol. Next week, if there's no improvement, I will go ahead and do a second dose of Paracleanse for tapeworms. And then I went ahead and added some aquarium salt as well as minerals to help boost their live bear needs. I have very, very soft water and it's quite possible that these fish were bred in a fish farm that used brackish water. So I need to somehow convert them slowly over time. Anyways, I already did the water change. So I'm going to go ahead and feed them and then dose the little Vamisol as soon as I turn off all the lights. So I just came out my bedroom and found a bunch of messages left for me by the kids, letting me know that one of the fish passed away last night. So let's go see what happened. So I'm trying to see if there are any symptoms on this fish. There's some particulate I see, but I don't know if that's just dirt that's collected around her. So I'm gonna scoop her out and take a closer look if I can. Now, unfortunately, there are five platies left out of the original seven. Uh, it could be quote unquote live bear's disease, which Corey from Aquarium Co-op just made a video on. So either they have been sick for quite a while ever since traveling from the fish farm to the wholesaler fish store, and then now me, or they were originally raised in brackish water. Either way, I'm really hoping that me dumping in a bunch of aquarium salt and equilibrium minerals yesterday will help, as well as I'm gonna continue the treatment using Levamisol and then another dewormer for tapeworms um, in the form of paracleanse. And on that depressing note, let's go ahead and feed them their Wednesday diet. So I was going to do some all around comprehensive foods, meaning extreme krill flakes and then their nano pellets. I noticed that some of them have been open for quite a while. And yes, they have been stored in the refrigerator, which helps, but let me go ahead and dump out what I have in here and refill it with the stuff that I froze in the freezer outside. So this is the freezer I have in the garage and I do have one shelf full of just frozen foods. I find that whenever I get um, new fish food, it's just way too much food. There's no way I can finish it in a reasonable amount of time. So instead, I individually package them in smaller Ziploc bags and that way I can take them out and then reset that date on the bottle and then keep feeding them fresh foods. Great trick if you don't have a ton of fish like me. All right, here are all the fish foods I am going to dump out and replace. And then I'm going to relabel them with the new um, open date so that I'll remember to replace them. All right, finally we can feed our fish. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but today we're gonna feed comprehensive dry prepared foods. So kind of an all-in-one mixes, good for community fish, has your protein and your vegetables all mixed in. I like to pour it out into the lid first and then pour it into the tank. Otherwise sometimes, whoops, you accidentally put too much in. <laughs> mm, smells like shrimp chips. 
And then this food is nice because I don't have to spread it out in different piles because it's little tiny bits. Everybody can get everything. For the live bears, both the mollies and the quarantine tank, I'm going to go ahead and feed flakes because they float at the surface and the live bears will eat them. We've got krill flakes for the meat and spirulina for the vegetables. Happy Thursday! I was planning on feeding frozen food again, but since I had that platy dye, I really just want to pump them up with as much nutrition and good food as possible. So I went ahead and pulled out my brine shrimp hatchery. And so it actually didn't take that long. I think it took about maybe 12 minutes to set up and then now it's been bubbling, bubbling for 24 hours. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in a little container and then feed it to all the tanks. I personally don't wash out my brine shrimp or anything. A little bit of salt isn't going to hurt them, especially in a big aquarium like this. It's not like they're in a little fry tub or something. All right, I don't see any new platy bodies today, so I hope they enjoy this feast. There you go, guys. Eat up. Be healthy, please. Good morning, happy Thursday. Today I'm going to feed Rapashi Soylent Green again. So this was stored from when I made it um, about three days ago, I think. And the great thing about Rapashi is that you can store it in the refrigerator for two weeks or in the freezer for up to six months. Instead of showing you the Rapashi feeding again, I'm going to show you how I feed my plants actually. With this particular aquarium, it actually eats a lot. I have to feed it easy green every single day. I lowered the lights yet again to hopefully control some of the algae, which is supposedly caused by too much light and not enough nutrients. So we're going to try to lower the lights again. Another thing I'm going to do today is plant my brand new pink flamingo crypt that I got from Aquarium Co-op. Yay! Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of room for, I guess, foreground, midground plants. So I'm going to have to move this crypt lutea to the foreground more so that I can put the crypt flamingo that I assume is going to be a little bit taller behind it. And I, don't, uh, I hate moving crypts because this crypt lutea just got settled and is growing new leaves, but you got to do what you got to do. Happy Saturday. It's actually the end of the day. The kids are already in bed and Saturday is our cleaning day. So we've been super busy. I'm very tired. And I'm just now getting to feed my fish. So today is another prepared foods day, but today instead of doing the kind of all in one comprehensive foods, I like to do kind of single ingredient foods such as freeze dried bloodworms, which tend to float. So they're very good for like the live bears, for example, not so much for this tank. So for them, I'm going to feed them flu ball bug bites, which is primarily made of soldier flies. So let's get to it. The Amano shrimp are just going around crazy. So I'm assuming that the female molted recently and they're looking to mate. Oh, my poor hungry babies. They've had to wait all day for this. It's snowing food. Before I can feed my baby mollies, it is Saturday, so it is their turn to get their tank clean. So let me do that really quickly. And then you'll notice I am going to, I'm trying this experiment where I spray the Anubius leaves in open area air for five minutes to try to get rid of some of that black beard algae. So this is part of the experiment to see if it will work. I still have five platies ever since adding the salt and minerals. Unfortunately, the lights have been on for off for quite a while, so they actually were asleep. But I just added some bug bites and freeze-dried bloodworms, so let's see if they eat. Happy Sunday! It is the last day of our vlog, and I am going to make today a mishmash day. So every single tank is going to get something different that's most suited to their needs. So for the main tank, we're going to have a slice of zucchini for all the algae eaters, as well as crab cuisine to give extra minerals for our mono shrimp. The uh, juvenile um, mollies are going to go ahead and get some easy fry food. Tons and tons of protein. I think it's like 55% or something. It's pretty insane. But at this age, they probably need more than a couple of 
and it is a slowly sinking food so some of it will remain remain near the top while others will be kind of swirling in the water column like that all right looks like the five platies are still doing okay i didn't see the fifth one go off and hide they are gonna get vibrabites which is kind of a floating worm looking food and it also slowly sinks as well Honestly, before I sat down and made this video, I just fed my fish whatever I felt like every day. But now that I was forced to sit down and make a mini meal plan, I really like it. I'm gonna continue to do it to make sure that my fish get all the necessary nutrients and vitamins and variety they need to be happy and healthy. If you have betta fish or cherry shrimp, check out these specific videos I made over here on all the different foods I've tried with them. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.